What is set back? Why do orchids get set back? How to identify that your orchid is set back? How long does an orchid remain set back? How to care for an orchid that is set back? Is there anything that can be done to avoid setback? Do all orchids suffer setback at some stage? Are there some orchids that are more prone to setback than others? Can an orchid survive setback? <laughs> if the answers to these questions are of interest to you, let's talk about it. Okay, first of all, before I get carried away, thank you for staying, thank you for your interest, and may I suggest that you get yourself a beverage of choice, maybe jot down questions as they come throughout the video so that you can fill the comments section and together we can turn my monologue into a dialogue. Secondly, it has been a hot minute since I did a video for the Orchid Lingo series, and if you have not seen any of my Orchid Lingo videos, I will link the playlist in the description. In this series, as well as the Masterclass series, I do deep dives into a single topic and answer as many of the popular questions about a word that is mentioned a lot in the orchid hobby. Examples for setback being all the questions that were in the prelude. Sometimes I have examples to show making the content of the video more visually appealing and sometimes I do not have examples to show. So what you're seeing are example, but this video is more of a look and listen as opposed to lots of footage to back up what I am talking about. Part two will involve all the examples that you see in the viewfinder and possibly some more to back up this video and what I'm gonna be talking about. It is, however, my hope that the information will play the most important part because setback comes in many different forms and not all examples are exactly the same. Keeping my fingers crossed that the answers I provide to the most popular questions will be the key to understanding what may be happening with an orchid of yours. And with that, you know what to do moving forward until such a time that your orchid snaps out of it. Welcome and thank you so much for being here. Your time and interest are very much appreciated. So first question I posed was, what is setback? If an orchid in your collection has been growing with a steady rhythm year in, year out, and then suddenly it stops behaving as expected, no new growth as and when it would be normal for it to grow new growth, or a smaller growth than its normal performance potential, or anything out of the ordinary that raises eyebrows and you can assess as not normal behavior, leaf drop, which is abnormal, and no sign of improved performance over an extended period of time, etc. A setback orchid is not dead, and to understand that it is not dead is to recognize if the roots are still viable and the pseudobulbs are to a degree plump and still serving as storage backup. The successful diagnosis of recognizing an orchid that is set back is by having observed its growth habit over the years the orchid has been in your collection. If your orchid is brand new, has not been in your collection for more than a year or just arrived, then your learning curve will have just begun. Getting to know your new orchids is a question of time. And when I say that, I do not mean the research of the orchid culture. That is an important factor, of course, but the actual getting to know your orchid comes after growing it in your environment for several seasons and observing its usual pattern of growth and bloom behavior. So if your orchids are new and they come straight out of the box with a new growth and new roots growing, you and your orchid are good to go. However, the setback may still happen despite the quality and condition of the orchid once she settles into your environment. Which brings us to the second question. Why do orchids get set back? There are many factors that cause an orchid to experience setback and one of the reasons is stress. There are many factors that are stressful to orchids. Not all orchids, because orchids respond differently to every challenge they are presented with. However, shipping is a major stress inducer for plants, not just orchids. So if your orchids arrive in great condition, that is awesome. However, be mindful that your orchid has undergone a tremendous amount of stress to get to you, and it is not always visible at first glance that there may already be a problem, unless there's evidence of cold or heat damage then those signs will already indicate to you that no matter what you do, your new orchid is going to be set back, is already set back, or it's imminent, it's going to get set back. While on the subject of new arrivals possibly being candidates for setback, the next point is the acclimating to your environment time frame. 
Some orchids just don't have any issues and settle right in and grow. That is something you will find with many hybrids because they are bred for vigor and strength. However, others may just experience shock. And until they get their bearings and truly settle in, they may experience setback. You won't know until the orchid that is not behaving as per what you expected does something or doesn't do anything according to your expectations after a considerable amount of time. Orchids that are set back in many cases are in fact doing the right thing in order for them to ensure their survival. Setback is a form of self-preservation. If we look at them from a human perspective, we can understand a little bit more about the setback behavior. So, consider yourself invited to a party. Let's dive into us as humans and see if we can see the parallel when it comes to orchids and setback, right? So, consider yourself invited to a party. You have a gaggle of friends that have all arranged to go to this party together with you. Woohoo! <laughs> Let's go a fun night out and it's going to be a great time. Then all of a sudden, the date of the party has to be moved and your gaggle of friends cannot make it on that date. Still, you feel obliged to go as the one to represent all your friends that could not make it. While you would prefer not to go as well, basically pretty much they urge you to go on their behalf. So, you're on your own, you don't know anyone in the room, and there are hundreds of people all mingling, chatting. The host introduces you to some of them to make you feel comfortable, but you cannot join the conversation because you don't know what they're talking about. So after the first hour, things start to get a little bit awkward, and you go check out the buffet, get yourself another drink, and subconsciously you end up on the perimeter of of the main happenings of the event, quietly observing, doing nothing. You're fine, it's not like you're uncomfortable, the atmosphere is not hostile in any way, but you don't engage because the whole thing is just awkward. You're on your own, don't know anybody. Eventually, if you've managed to hang out long enough, something will change and you are suddenly part of the actual ongoings of the party. You can come out of your shy shell and end up having a great time. What started out as awkward turned into something epic and resulted in you picking up breakfast on your way home. <laughs> a tangent of an analogy, but that is how I see acclimating time frame for orchids that come new to our collection and the setback is not visibly evident. However, the process has started. So if your new orchid comes with a new growth and then after six weeks that new growth has not moved one iota, or the new roots it came with have not grown at all or stopped growing. Those are clear signs of your orchid now being set back. In addition to the aforementioned, the following reasons can cause your orchid to get set back. So, if at all possible, avoid these things from happening. Pest infestations. Having a pest infestation get to the point that the treatment has to be a bit more radical than the preventative treatment would ever be. That orchid was already struggling with having the pest suck the life out of it. Now it has to deal with the treatment as well. Possible open wounds, etc. A heavy infestation will induce setback even after it has been cleaned and the infestation has not returned. I consider anything that attacks my orchids a pest, so even though I love my cockatoo, him attacking my Gold Coast pseudobulbs, he's a pest that I have to be mindful of when my orchids are indoors during the winter. This orchid was a strong, reliably growing orchid. Like clockwork, I could time what she would do next and when, and well... <laughs> While it doesn't look as if much damage has been done to her structures and they are still functioning, the orchid thinks otherwise and has told me so. Her next new growth was a fraction of what she is capable of, and now because she is a vigorous hybrid, she's starting on the next new growth in defiance of what has happened to her. Luckily in defiance because any other orchid may respond with a setback for a year, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Wrong repot timing. Repotting without any new growth visible can be a major trigger that will set an orchid back. Usually, we radically trim the dead roots and then proudly pot up our squeaky clean orchid, thinking that new roots will grow into squeaky clean media, but suddenly the orchid has been shocked by the premature repot and to conserve energy, stops any progress with the new growth and the stage of new root growth is delayed. Enter setback. Inadequate temperatures, may they be too hot or too cold, will set an orchid back. Usually because cold temperatures will take out the root system, if allowed to stay wet, and hot temperatures will dehydrate the orchid, even if watered regularly, due to possibly low humidity levels to balance out the heat. 
Transpiration through the stomata is a thing and a real threat to orchids that are grown in an environment with high temperatures but low humidity. Not to mention sunburn on leaves, but I'm gonna mention sunburn on leaves. If a leaf or several leaves get sunburned, then they are of no use to the orchid. They will not photosynthesize, and with that, eventually they will fall off, or we cut the sunburned parts out. Well, either way, the structures are lost, and with that, their ability to support the orchid with what they were meant to do, thus weakening the orchid. Which already segs into the next question and answer, but can I just stop here for a sec and ask you to like the video? If this video has given you any kind of light bulb thoughts and insight into something you may have been observing in your collection, please like this video. And if I may be so bold to ask you to share it with anyone you know, ahem, like Orchid Society members or friends anywhere along those lines, that would be greatly appreciated. And if you have not subscribed, please do so. There is a part two to this video, which will be a show and tell of everything I'm outlining in this video. So hint, hint, nudge, nudge. You may not want to miss that when it airs. And thank you so, so much. Moving on swiftly with the next question. What are the signs that your orchid is set back? We already briefly touched on one factor, and that would be smaller growth than what you're accustomed to. New growths that do not progress as what is normal, even for very slow growing orchids. Dehydrated looking leaves because of possible issues with the root system or the temperature and airflow balance are out of sync with the humidity levels, mainly the lack thereof. No new growth as per what is normal for the orchid, which subsequently includes no new roots. Leaf drop that is not normal to the behavior of the orchid or premature leaf drop if the orchid is deciduous. Leaves do not open properly, seeing as prior stress has caused roots to fail. Or pest treatments have caused the cell structure to decline, this making them not function efficiently. This is only touching the tip of the iceberg. Of course, there's plenty of other symptoms and signs for setbacks. So if you have anything to add to that, remember the comments. Let's change this monologue into a dialogue. <laughs> now, next question. How long can an orchid find itself in this setback state? And the answer to that is how much time have you got? <laughs> Seriously, because worst case scenario, it can take years. The orchid can look as if it's not alive anymore, but the signs of life is what we must recognize in order for us not to open the trash lid prematurely. But yes, an orchid can be set back for years. Usually in my experience, that can be the case with dendrobiums. While tough and fighters and survivors, they are the ones that will look the same from the moment they went into setback to several years later. However, that is the key. They look the same. They have not declined. They may not have had leaves, or maybe they hold on to the leaves but are not growing new growths, or they will drop all their leaves and just be bare canes for years. The fact that their visual appearance has not changed throughout is testament to the fact that they are still alive and should not be considered gone. If the canes or pseudobulbs do not show any signs of desiccating, the orchid is alive. It may be majorly set back, but it is alive, and the same goes for any other genus of orchids. While dendrobiums have the longest setback time that I have encountered until they snap out of it, other orchids will not survive that lengthy time of setback, or the time frame will be much shorter, the maximum being a year, even under optimal growing conditions. A setback orchid usually needs a full 12 months to recuperate. That does not mean that you can expect a new growth within 12 months. It can take 18 months. Because the hormones that activate after the orchid is coming out of the setback funk, we can't see them doing their thing. Only when a new growth or new roots start can we tell that the orchid is snapping out of setback as per our visuals. So don't give up on any of your orchids that you may be thinking of as you listen to the information. In my case, until every single structure of an orchid in my collection isn't at the point of resembling oregano, I do not give up on it. It is frustrating for sure, should it get to the point of binning the orchid. We can easily think that we could have been done with it sooner, but I just prefer to be 100% sure that there is nothing left for me to work with before I toss an orchid. And speaking of what to work with, let me address how to take care of a setback orchid. Whichever genus of orchid is setback, whatever the ideal culture for that orchid is when it is healthy and growing normally, reduce all that by 50%. 
reduce light exposure, reduce fertilizer, reduce supplementation of additional nutrients, and reduce exposure to harsh temperature fluctuations, be they hot or cold. The only increase in the care for a setback orchid has to be in humidity levels and flushing the pot regularly. Reducing the optimal culture of the orchid that is set back equates to reducing any stresses that may adversely affect the orchid. If you consider the care of a setback orchid like that of a seedling, no matter that it is a mature orchid, you will be good to go. And stick with the seedling thought care requirement until the orchid snaps out of it. Then start to increase the culture requirements in slow and gentle and gradual increments. The increase of fertilizer should be akin to encouragement and not a blow to the orchid system. Avoiding any salt buildup in the pot is paramount and I would highly recommend to not repot until new roots grow if repotting is something you really want to do. To answer the question, is there anything we can do to avoid setback? Yes, there is, but it is pretty much something that will happen to anyone with any orchid, even though we believe to be doing the right thing by our orchids. What you can do to avoid setback is avoid everything I have pointed out previously. Avoid any unnecessary stressors that could trigger setback, but for us that cannot visit nurseries to shop for our orchids and rely on online shopping, that would pretty much also mean don't buy orchids and have them shipped to you, which is unrealistic. However, if your orchid arrives in a shipment, the best thing you can do for it or them is give them immediate soak in CalMag and seaweed. Just to either stop the stress reaction in its tracks, avoiding the setback, or encouraging them that if they've already headed into the setback phase of their cycle when they arrive, help them to snap out of it sooner. This will also help the acclimating process by providing the vitals of the components of CalMag and seaweed. And no matter what you see happening in the pot, do not repot. If new roots are growing, yeah, we are tempted. New orchid, get in there. Mm. My advice is don't repot. Watch the new roots, see if they progress. Hopefully they will, but please wait at least six weeks before subjecting the orchid to the stress of a repot. Also, if you rely on purchasing orchids online, please purchase early spring or early fall. This will ensure that your orchids are not being shipped during the hottest time of year or the coldest for that matter. We do not know where they are stored on their journey to us, the worst being transport delays and hot or freezing warehouses. Oh, goodness me. While heat packs may help along the way, they can also only be effective for a short period of time. Especially in Europe, our shipping time is much longer than in the US. So heat packs, even if used, are well and truly cooled off by the time our packages arrive if they were to have been shipped late fall or early winter. Another popular question I posed is, are all orchids prone to setback? The answer is yes. Some are more sensitive to it than others, but no matter the orchid, no matter if it's new in your collection, no matter if it's established, it is prone to setback if any of the aforementioned factors come to effect. In my collection, I've found that my Rapiculus ladies are the most prone to setback simply because of where they come from and the stress they endure to get to my patio. But I also have established orchids that suffer setback because of the conditions that they face during the winter. So be mindful that a healthy orchid can at any given moment in time suffer setback if we become complacent and think, <laughs> it's a big one, it's established, it's fine. Usually that is when orchids will teach us a lesson and pretty much say, hold my beer. And finally, after an orchid has told us to hold its beer, and we hold its beer, the next question we then ask ourselves, can orchids survive setback? The answer is yes, they can. However, it can take quite some time before the orchid is back to normal, as mentioned before. Setback is like a reset, and as our orchids are super slow growers, we only have one or two new growths per year for the most part, and it takes 11 months for growth to mature for the most part. You can do the math as to when you can consider your setback orchid as being back on track. If the setback took a year, then you're lucky. Another year for the new growth to mature and grow roots. Mature does not equate original size potential because of the slow, encouraging rebuilding of the ideal culture during that time. And then another year to see if the next new growth is larger than the rebound growth, etc. If all goes well, a setback orchid will have recovered after three years. That time frame, for me, is realistic for many orchids, with a few exceptions, but for the most part, 
three years is a feasible recovery time. Now that I believe to have answered all the questions I've just asked at the beginning, I will point out part two of this video and that will be the examples of what I have in my collection to give you some insights as to how these orchids got into their setback state and how long they have been there as well as is there any progress? How long did the progress take? And of course, I will be discussing the care in order to ensure that if I see progress, I don't jeopardize it and then really cause problems. And I think part two will be helpful to consolidate the main body of this video. Having said all that, I hope that you found this video interesting informative even though there was not really anything to see here with the exceptions of the orchids that you're looking at those being the ones i will be going into detail on in part two and of course if you have any questions for me in the comments i will use those as the q a part to the part two video as well on top of that once part two has aired i will link it in the description of this video and vice versa this video will be linked in the description of the show and tell if you've made it to the end thank you for giving me the opportunity to say thank you. I appreciate your time and please take advantage of having listened to the end and comment away. I look forward to your feedback, your questions and anything you may want to point out when it comes to setback with orchids in your collection. Let me know, any informative little snippets will be added into part two. Meanwhile, I do sincerely hope that this was helpful. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you for subscribing. <laughs> Thank you for listening. I wish you a fabulous day on that one condition that you stay safe because I would love to see you again in part two. Take care. Bye.